Okay. Go ahead and get started. Thank you everyone for being here. I'm just gonna find my screen. There it is. Can you all hear me okay? Okay. So thank you all for joining us for our third Art in the Library's virtual program. Just like last time, this session is being recorded and will be documented on the Art and Library's website for public perusal. We encourage your engagement and welcome questions in the chat box publicly or privately, as well as questions using your audio or video. At the end of the session, we'll post a survey to get your feedback on the session. Co-host Beth Torin and I are excited to welcome Beth Ann McCormick for our third program. Beth Ann serves as program specialist in the pathologist assistant program at the WVU Health Sciences Center. She's an avid and diverse crafter from glasswork to fabric and ceramics. A few of her works are currently on display in the Health Sciences Library in the group exhibition, Health Sciences Professionals Create, which is also available as an online exhibit. Also, Beth Ann will have a solo exhibition of her work this fall at the Health Sciences Library. Welcome, Beth Ann. Welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, as Sally mentioned, my name is Beth Ann McCormick and I've been with the university for 27 years and have been a crafter most of my life starting uh, at a very young age. So today I would really like to talk to you about crafting. I think. Advance. <laughs> Sally's controlling our advance. There we go. Um, crafting is defined by the dictionary as an occupation or trade requiring manual dexterity or artistic skill to make or produce with care, skill, or ingenuity. Art is defined by the dictionary as a skill acquired by experience, study, or observation, an occupation requiring knowledge or skill conscious use of skill, and creative imagination, and produced as an artistic effort or for decorative purposes. Crafting could be such things as a carpenter's craft, crafting of writing, or crafts such as pottery, painting, sewing, etc. Art can be defined as painting landscapes or portraits, graphic art, or fine art. The main word that is prevalent in the definition of craft and art is the word skill. The quality or state of being artful. Does it take a true skill to be crafty or artistic? Advance. <laughs> okay. okay, art and crafting are almost the same, but there is a difference, or is there? There's a very fine line between them that distinguishes them apart from each other, and we will see if you agree where that line is. Advance. I remember my mother sending me off to camp each summer so that I could interact with other kids and keep busy doing arts and crafts. At that time, I didn't think there was a difference. I took clay and made pots and other things with my hands. I painted pretty pictures that she could hang on the refrigerator. I put popsicle sticks together to make houses and different things. I made a sun catcher and I made jewelry. My mother was so proud of these that she would tell everyone what a very artistic daughter she had. This is when I first heard the word artistic. But to me, they were just things to keep busy. It didn't seem like a really big deal. Advance. I started to doing more and more crafts like paint by numbers, making my own clay, and learning how to put it into figures and bowls, and baking and cake decorating. I painted a lot, and I enjoyed that the most. But still, at the age of 12, I did not consider it art. I was just putting paint on paper or a small canvas and doodling, as my dad would call it. It was pretty to me, but just something to do to pass the time. I learned to crochet and knit 
even though I like crocheting better. I can still do both. I baked a lot and made cakes for family and friends. But I even opened a bakery and taught classes in cake decorating for over 25 years, becoming a certified pastry chef. I was always asking myself if this was art or me just being crafty. Most things took imagination and creativity, so it must be art, right? Not exactly, depending on who you talk to. Advance. Many people think that art is an extension of a creative process that only exists in our imagination. Does our imagination differentiate what is craft and what is art? I don't think so. Just because everyone is not a Picasso, Michelangelo, Frank Lloyd Wright, or even Bob Ross, doesn't make them less artistic. The painting in the bottom is a painting that I did when I took a Bob Ross class a long time ago. And he was considered the everyday person's painter. Anybody could put a tree. People would tell me all the time in my classes, I'm not artistic. I can't do what you do. I would tell them, you don't have to be artistic to do what I do. You just have to enjoy what you are doing. And if you're just putting icing on a cake with sprinkles, that's artistic. This was their way of copping out and not trying to see if they could really do anything more than that, what they were actually doing. They were afraid that somebody wouldn't like it. They would think it was ugly. Many people have an opinion of themselves that they can't do something. There is someone else that can do it better. And they don't give themselves a chance to express themselves. Advance. To me, crafting an art are a way to express myself. Whether it be glass blowing, which is up in the corner, stained glass, cake decorating, crocheting, embroidery, pottery, weaving, painting, ceramics, woodworking, sculpting, forging, which I have done, quilting, sewing, winemaking, gardening, photography, etc. You are expressing yourself the best way you can. Is what you are doing earth shattering and does it make a difference? My answer would be a big yes. It is making a difference in your self-esteem. It makes a difference in the people that see it. And it makes a difference in the person you give it to. This is all pictures of art and crafts that I do. And this is just some of them. There's a lot of them in boxes somewhere. <laughs> Advance. How does it make you feel when you do something creative? It reduces stress and anxiety. It trains your brain to focus and it sparks the creativity. Anyone, everyone can do it. Many crafts require no experience. It can involve the whole family as an activity, something they can all do together. And most importantly, anybody that receives a handmade gift treasures it. Just making something handmade and giving it to someone makes it more personal. Advance. We were all young children making our first painting for Mother's Day or Father's Day and being so proud when it was put on the refrigerator. We made something someone loved and thought was artistic. And I can bet that there is still in that cedar chest where it was put in with pride and love. I still have my son's artwork and crafts from their days at camp and in school. Advance. Most people don't make money off of what they make. 
If they are not a Picasso, they're not going to make millions of dollars off their work. They may only make five, ten dollars off of an item. They sell at what is called a craft show. Many people recur to crafting as a hobby or something they can do in their spare time. They may sell an item here or there. They enjoyed the process of creating. And really that's what crafting and art are all about. Making something you and others will enjoy. Advance. So back to the original question. Is crafting art? What do you think? Advance. Or here's a poll. <laughs> Okay, and as soon as that goes, that little box goes away. <laughs> Just a little joke for you all. I had a friend ask me, what are you doing to pass the time during the outbreak? Because I've been home a lot. Me, I said, well, I'm mostly working on craft projects that I've had lying around that I've never been able to finish. My friend said, well, what will you do once you run out of craft supplies? I couldn't stop laughing. I said, you aren't a crafter, are you? You haven't seen my sewing room or my crafting room. I will never run out of supplies. Advance. So here's a picture of me on Tuesday with quarantine hair. Um, don't really like it. Glad I got it cut. And I'm working on finishing up a plate that I had uh, started and can't wait to see what it looks like when it gets fired. So here's the last question for our discussion. And it's, what do you think? Is it art? Is it the same? Does it depend? Like many people said in the poll, depends. It's complicated. Art can be, and crafting can be, as complicated or as easy as we make it. You can go out and you can put a seed in the dirt. You can go out and you can do anything that you set your mind to. Because everyone has, in their mind, that little bit of creativity and imagination. So, thank you for all listening. Back to you, Sally. <laughs> Thank you. And thank you so much. Thank you for bearing with me as I was <laughs> working on your slides. And uh, the poll, <laughs> it was easier than me doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure people have questions. You have such a diverse array of media. Um, would anyone like to either unmute or ask a question in the chat? I um, encourage you to um, ask any questions. Please. I'm going to take a drink. I've got, of course, talking. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, well, sure. um, you do such an amazing array of, um, of, um, <laughs> of uh, media. What, what's your favorite? Do you have like a most favorite? I love painting. I love painting for years uh, and painting on almost anything. I do canvas painting. I do painting on ceramics. Um, I even paint rocks. I've got a, if you look at one of the pictures, I've got a little piggy from some rocks that I collected taking my dog on a walk and decided to paint a little pig. Um, so it's whatever comes to my mind, but painting lets me be free. The feather that I just worked on on the, la on the plate in the last picture was just a free hand of something that I just felt like doing. It encompassed all colors. And it's just, it didn't really have a meaning, but it was just joyful because it's been so gloomy. <laughs> so I wanted to create something that was bright, but I do love painting. Uh, for years, uh, it was cake decorating. Um, uh, being a, being a uh, pastry chef, um, working in the business, teaching culinary arts classes to students, um, working on one of my largest cakes, which was over six feet tall and competing, um, and the largest class I taught was with uh, a new technique I developed uh, called staining uh, fondant, 
And mm -hmm. that was done for 289 people at a conference at Disney World. Mm -hmm. So uh, that took up a lot of my life at one time. So now that I've given that part up, I'm free to do and create anything. My motto has always been, I will try everything once. Mm -hmm. If I like it, I'll keep doing it. That's why my art room is full of stuff. If I don't, eh, I go on to something else. And the only thing I found that I did not like was macrame. And I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because I was allergic to the jute. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's a few mm -hmm. questions in the chat box. Do you have your own kiln? Uh, no, I do not. I use the kiln down at the Wow Factory. So when I, um, when I do any of my pottery with clay or when I do my ceramics, um, I know the two ladies that have the uh, Wow Factory, and I will take my uh, stuff down there and have it fired. Cool. And what do you say to folks who say, I'm not creative or artistic? Anybody can be artistic. Pick up anything. Um, the latest craze is diamond art painting. If you can hold a pencil, you can make a diamond art painting because all it takes is holding that little that little pencil like um, apparatus, which did, and you put a little wax on it. You pick up a bead and you put it down. If you can do that, you can create. <laughs> and so, uh, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say so anybody can do it. Um, it's just what your mind's eye sees. And we had an, a few more questions. What medium is the sun picture? The sun picture is actually diamond art. Oh. It is actually over 4,000 little teeny dots oh um, that was made <laughs> with that pen. There's 4,000 of them. Now, that doesn't compare to this over 6,000 that I put into the mosaic that I did. Uh, here's my husband. He's got it. <laughs> this one, those wow. are all tiny little dots of, of little, 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 little teeny dots. I don't know if you can see it, but those are all put in there by hand with a little, with a, uh, a diamond art pen. But the mosaic I put in each tile which is a one by one, uh, well, one by one tile or a half by half tile to create the mosaic that flows down the wall of my shower um, on the outside with a waterfall into a pond with koi fish. And hmm. the one picture that's on the whole menagerie of pictures with the koi fish is actually on my floor. But each of those was put in one at a time by hand. Wow. Here's another question. Have you ever had to clean out your art collection due to lack of space or creating new works? And how do you decide what to keep? Yes, I have. Um, when my husband brought all of his stuff in. But what he did for me was he bought me an out shed, uh, a nice building. And so what I do, and it has a, a little attic. So what I do when I'm not working on something is I store it in that little out shed. Now, it's starting to get full, so I might either need a new building or have a yard sale. <laughs> cool. And um, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, how did, did you? How do you decide what to keep? Or, well, it just depends on the time of the year. Like I've got tons and tons of yarn to work with all of my afghans that I make or anything that I make, like the little hats and stuff. Those are seasonal. So um, I don't want to sit here in 90 degree heat with yarn and a big blanket on my lap. So I tend to do a lot of those in the winter. In the summer, of course, is my gardening. My, my photography, I do all year round, depending on where I go. Um, it just depends on, on my mood, what I'm, what I'm wanting to do. Like the necklace that I'm wearing actually is sea glass, that and the earrings that I picked up in um, Maine. Um, when we went on vacation last year. So they've been sitting around, but I decided it's summer. I want to, I want to work with that. So I look at things and decide, Oh, I want to do that. Oh, I want to do that. Oh, I want to do that. I'm, I'm a flitter. It's something shiny. Woo, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And um, another question, are you self-taught in these mediums or do you take classes or read books? I am self-taught. 
in almost everything that I do. Um, I will sometimes look at a video, but most of the time self-taught. Um, cake decorating, I started when I was 12, uh, doing my sister's birthday cake that she happened to hold too much and it slid onto the floor. Uh, but <laughs> that, and I did my first uh, four tier wedding cake when I was 16. So um, I did look at some uh, things for cake decorating, but ev other than that, most of everything I do, if I pick it up, I look at, look at something, if I want a new pattern to uh, crochet, I'll look at the pattern and I go right from there. So it's basically, you know, looking at something and doing it. Cool. And I have a question. Do you think that your, your craftiness or your artistic side plays a role in your day job at WVU? Yes, it does. I do a lot of events for our, uh, we have a white coat ceremony for graduation and I have made flower arrangements. I do an ornament for each of my students one, during graduation that is either the state of West Virginia or the flying WV. I was lucky enough when they first made a cookie cutter of the flying WV uh, 30 some years ago or more to get one. So I get the clay, roll it out and cut those. And I make each of my students a, um, uh, an ornament for their year of graduation. So they have something to remember WVU by. Um, so I, uh, I like to do a lot of things with, um, you know, when we have events mm -hmm. um, and things like that. So it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, usually I'm also trying to be creative in, you know, how I put, uh, maybe my work together, my paperwork together. Um, I'm a very organized and, and OCD type person. Um, I've also been very hyperactive as a child. So it was always finding things to keep me busy was my mother's chore. And I still am like that. And when something is out of place, I have to fix it. I have, I work with some, some people that aren't quite like that. So I always want to go in their office and rearrange everything. <laughs> you know? So it's like, uh, no, better not do that. <laughs> they have their, their system and I have mine. Um, but uh, yes, I do use it during, during my work. Yes. Awesome. Does anyone else have any questions? Audio, video, or chat box? Okay. Well, thank you so much, and I'm excited to um, install your work again, and hopefully in August at the Health Sciences Library. Yes. Oh, I can't wait. I've got uh, so many of all those things were in those pictures I have waiting to to uh, bring up to you. So, yes, awesome. and some other things that I have found. Uh, I forgot about my bears. I was an international teddy bear artist at one time. Uh, I was featured in several magazines, so I uh, happened to look up and see my teddy bear sitting there, and I thought, hey, that would be something really I don't think I've ever talked about. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. awesome. I'm excited. So, um, yeah. Everyone, I've put a, a link in the chat box to um, a survey to uh, assess uh, the session and help us um, get feedback. So I'd appreciate it if you can fill that out. Yes, so thanks. A couple quick questions. Our next Zoom will be June 26 with Carrie Gunter Seymour, who's the curator of Women of Appalachia Art Project. So hope you can join it. And then in July, we're hoping to do a round robin art and crafting session with anybody who wants to share what they're working on. So just get in touch with me or fill out the survey and I'd love to feature you. So um, thanks again, everyone. Thank you so much, Beth Ann. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad everyone was able to join today and I hope you found it's a little enlightening and gives you some inspiration to go out and do something, craft something. <laughs> Be artistic today. It's a icky day. Yeah, <laughs> true. Enjoy your afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Enjoy your afternoon. Bye-bye now.